welcome to Mod 3 Style, episode number three of our Learn to Sew series. Today we are going to learn all about fabrics. Now a lot of times people will ask me for recommendations on fabrics and then they'll offer something like this, oh I could just buy cotton. Now I know, and this is my disclaimer, I know that if this wasn't my job I would do the exact same thing. But, but going into a fabric store and asking to please have some cotton is like walking into a restaurant and saying, could I have some meat? There are just so many different types of cotton in a fabric store, probably more cotton in different types of cotton in a fabric store than there are types of meat. So to help you have a less awkward experience at the fabric store, we're going to teach you what you need to know to be very suave in a fabric store. The first thing you need to know is about fabric ingredients. Okay, what it goes into your fabrics. And that is divided into three different categories. Okay, the first category is man-made or synthetic fibers. And that's going to be your polyester, and your nylon, and your spandex. Number five has both polyester and spandex in it. The second group is your natural fibers. That's going to be your cotton, here, and your linen, and your ramy, and your rayon. Third group is your animal fibers. That's going to be your wool, your cashmere, and your silk. I only have the silk here. The silk is made from the cocoon of the silkworm, but it's included in the animal fibers group. Now that we know the ingredients in the fabric, we need to understand how the fabric is made. Just like with cooking, the way we manufacture the fabric completely changes the nature of the fabric. So take asparagus. Whether you grill the asparagus or you steam the asparagus, you'll end up with a different flavored dish. The same is true with fabrics, depending on how it's manufactured, will change the nature of the fabric. So there are four main types of fabric manufacturing. The first is weaving, and this is done on a grid system. So horizontal and vertical threads and yarns are woven over and under one another to produce a woven fabric. Now, a weave, because of the way it's made, is actually quite stable and sturdy. But also because of how it's made, it tends to fray. It will always fray, I should say. Um, anytime you see a fabric that has yarns off the edge, you will know this is a weave. Weaves are the only fabrics that fray. It's also a great challenge and something you always have to deal with when you're using a weave. And there's different ways that you can deal with the fraying that we'll talk about. One of the characteristics of a weave is that it does not stretch. There are two exceptions to this rule. If, if you have a denim, everyone knows about a uh, stretched denim. If you have a denim with stretch, it is still a weave. It just means that spandex is woven in one of the, one of the fibers. The other exception is at the 45 degree angle. If you think of your fabric like a grid, right at that 45 degree is called a bias. And on that angle, it will stretch. And all fabric will stretch at a 45 degree angle. That doesn't mean it's not a weave. It's still a weave. It just stretches on that 45 degree angle. Weaves also tend to be used for more formal occasions, that's where you're going to have all of your major gowns and suits are made out of weaves. Second group for manufacturing fabrics are knits, and these are made with a series of interlocking loops. And because those loops have space, they, knits are known for stretching, it allows a knit to stretch. Now knits do not fray, but they do unravel and they will roll. This is one of the challenges of sewing with knits. Knits are considered more casual fabric. They're made for like your t-shirts, your leggings, your jeggings are all knits. If you think of your woven fabrics, they're kind of like a filet mignon and your knits are more like a hamburger 
or a veggie burger if you prefer. People sometimes, when thinking of knits, don't realize that fur is actually a knit too. They, they get confused because they see the little shedding that happens with the fur off the edge and they think that's fraying, but that's just shedding fur. Your fur fabrics are actually knits. You can see the little loops on the back side, and also they have stretch. Do you see how that rolled when we pulled it? So when you are making something out of fur, you need to prepare to deal with stretch. Category number three is non-woven fabrics. Now, non-woven fabrics are not very well known, but they're actually quite useful. The way they're made is a pile of little fibers are all laid out and smashed together using heat and pressure and chemicals to make a fabric. Because of the way they're made, when you cut into them, there is no fraying, there is no rolling, and there's no unraveling. However, they are not very strong fabrics. If I pulled hard enough, this would just tear to pieces. They are usually used for disposable things. Think of your hospital gowns, your tea bags, vacuum bags, shoe covers, hair covers. Non-wovens are very useful. I would say the most famous non-woven fabric is felt. Felt is like the king of or queen of crafts. In fact, a year ago, actually this very week, my twin sister and I entered into a, a charity auction of Christmas trees, where people buy Christmas trees and decorate them and auction them off for charity. So my twin sister and I bought a tree, and then we bought many, many yards of felt. And my students and my twin sister and I sewed over 70 stuffed monsters and put it all on this Christmas tree to auction it for charity and it was so fun and our tree sold and it was fabulous. And the reason I chose felt is that it's so bright and colorful and it's also easy to sew crafts with because where it does not fray, you do not have to sew it right sides together and then turn it inside out. You can just sew wrong sides together and keep your seam allowances really thin and it looks fabulous. The other really famous non-woven fabric is interfacing. And everyone who's ever sewed something with a waistband or a collar has used interfacing to make that fabric more stable and more sturdy. Interfacing can be cut into any shape and then fused or sewn onto other fabrics. Now, I will tell you, there are also woven and knit interfacings, but most interfacing is a non-woven. All right. The last category, category number four, is netting. Now, netting makes up that fabulous stuff that is tulle and lace. Every little girl loves netting. Um, the way netting is made is it's a bunch of yarns or fibers knotted together. And because of the way it's made, once it is cut, it does not fray, it does not roll, and it does not unravel. Of course, the challenge with netting is that it is so sheer, you're going to have to use many layers or at least a second layer um, to work with that and lace as well. So now that you know the fabric ingredients and how they're made, you can reasonably get what you want. Just like with food, you could walk into a restaurant and say, you'd like some pasta al dente and you'd like it with Parmesan and cream sauce. But how much smoother would it be for you to just know the name Fettuccine Alfredo? And at a fabric store, you could walk in and you could say, I would like a knit polyester fabric. But it would be so much smoother for you just to know the name fleece. So, here over at my board, I have 40 different very common fabrics. I have on my website a little information about every one of these fabrics. Not in order, just to make it tricky for you. Now, to incentivize your learning, what I'm going to do is send you a brand new pair of sewing shears. If you are one of the first three people who puts all 40 of these fabrics in an email to me and gets them correct. Now there's just a few more things you need to know before you can go to a fabric store and move like a pro. First of all, fabrics come in like eight different standard sizes or widths. I find this a bit frustrating. I wish it was a little more standardized, just a handful of sizes. They can range from about 42 inches up to 72 inches. Now, 
figuring out how much fabric you need is a function of both how wide your fabric is and how long it is. So you will need to determine how wide the particular fabric you've chosen is before you know how long it is. If you get a 60 inch fabric, you may only need a yard and a half. If it is 45 inches, you may need two yards. Now a yard is 36 inches and typically people buy fabric in yards. However, you can walk up to a fabric store and say, I just want eight inches of fabric, but understand it's gonna be eight inches by like 45 or 50 inches wide, okay? Now fabric is stored on bolts. This is a fabric bolt, but this is also a fabric bolt. At the end of the square fabric bolts, they have the information you need to determine several important things. Right here in this tiny, very hard to see location is how wide this fabric is, 058. It is 58 inches wide. This fabric right here, where is it? Right there. They try and hide it is 44 inches wide. Anything, any numbers you find, just two numbers with an inch after it is how wide it is. It is a little hard to tell because there are other random numbers kind of throughout the, the label on the bolt end. But if it has an inches after it and it's between the number 42 and 72, that's how wide your fabric is. You will also see your fiber content. This one is 98% polyester and 6 per 94. I did quick math there. 94% polyester and 6% spandex. And this is 100% cotton. Now that's really important to know because before you cut out your fabric and sew it, if there, that fabric is going to shrink, you need to remove that shrinkage by laundering it, washing and drying it before you cut and sew the fabric. It would be terrible for you to sew yourself something fabulous and then for it to shrink afterward. So look at the fiber content at the end of the bolt. It also has care instructions. Take a picture with your phone so you can remember. And then if you are not sure if that particular fiber will shrink, Google it. Look up, does linen shrink? Does rayon shrink? The answer is yes, but Google it for yourself so you know, and then be sure and pre-wash and dry it before you sew it and before you cut it. Okay, now you are ready to go into a fabric store and act like you own the place. You can get exactly what you want now. I would love to thank the people at Hive Channel 5 for broadcasting this and remind you to go to my website mod3style.com where there's all different kinds of information about fabrics and sewing and links to my different tutorials. I'd also like to remind you to join us for episode number four on our Learn to Sew series. We're going to talk about different essential um, supplies like scissors and marking tools and I'm also going to show you an awesome and very inexpensive little cutting table you can make yourself. Thanks so much and we'll see you on episode number four.